Hello everyone, this is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. I'm so excited to bring you this video today. If you are here for the first time, somehow you found my channel, welcome. I hope that you hit that subscribe button to stick around and then also hit that bell and choose all so that YouTube will notify you whenever I upload a new video. My videos come out about once or twice a week right now and I'm just always so excited to bring you my latest home decor DIYs. Today I have a fun farmhouse DIY made using something that you might find at a thrift store or you can use a Dollar Tree version as well. Before we get into the DIY, I need to share shirt number three from Thread Tank. It just says, be nice. This is the V-neck tee. Again, these are from Thread Tank. Their motto is stories that you wear. So they have lots of different choices of t-shirts and sayings. I've shown you in the past the slouchy sweatshirt and also a crew neck tee. So check out the link in the description box if you're interested. I don't receive any um, compensation for this. They just sent me some shirts and I said I would share them with you and let you know what I think. I can also tell you that I have washed and dried my other two shirts and they did not shrink that I noticed at all and the printing on the front is still just like it was when it was brand new. So like I said, if you're here for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. If you're coming back to my channel and it's not your first time, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I appreciate my subscribers and viewers so, so much. I've been on YouTube for a little over a year and I am just having a blast with it. So today's DIY is a farmhouse lantern trio. I know lanterns are all over the place and what's really cool about them is there are so many different materials you can use to make them. So I hope this video inspires you to use some things you have around the house to make your set of lanterns. I'll be back at the end of the video just with some final words and we'll see you then. Okay guys, for today's project, we are using Jenga blocks. I love crafting with wood, as you know, and you can use Dollar Tree version if you can't find regular Jenga blocks. I'm always looking on Facebook Marketplace um, for when people are selling these. You can get the full game of 54 for, you know, just a couple bucks. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all my blocks with a base coat of truffle chalk paint. I'm mostly doing this because I wanna cover up the word Jenga that is on two sides of each block. All right, so here's all my blocks with the truffle paint. Now I'm making two different sizes of lanterns. For the bigger size, you are going to need 28 Jenga blocks. We're gonna make four sets of what you saw there like in uh, an upside down U shape. So two blocks on each side and then three across the middle. So two, two, and three. So for my one large lantern, you're gonna do this four times. So that's seven times four, that's your 28 blocks. I'm also going to make there you go. <laughs> I'm also going to make two small ones, but I'll show you the dimensions for those later. So now that my sets of two and sets of three are dry with the wood glue, here I'm showing you my four sets. And I'm going to now glue these together in a C shape, an upside down U shape, whatever you want to call them. All right, so four of those, and then at the top, you can see I have four smaller sets. That's for a smaller size lantern. You need 16 Jenga blocks to make the small one. Here's for the larger one. 
and here's for the smaller one. You can see one, two across the top, and one on each side. All right, so here's my four sets for my large lantern. I know this is going kind of fast, but all these uh, numbers will be in the description box as well. So I'm taking two and I'm gluing one right at the center. So where those two side blocks are, I'm gluing this one going kind of in a rainbow, I guess, from the center to the center. And now taking my third piece, I'm gonna put glue at the top and bottom again. And now I'm gluing it to the center line of piece number two. So you can see there at the top and bottom, I'm kind of making what's going to be a square in the top there. And now my fourth piece, you can see how it's going to line up at the center and the center. Now these are Jenga blocks and I'm using glue, so they may not line up perfectly top and bottom, but um, I think that's part of kind of what adds to the farmhouse character of it. So there you can see I've got my four C's glued together. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my smaller lantern. First I have to glue my side pieces well, what will be the top and bottom of each of my four smaller C's for my smaller lantern. And now we'll put our smaller lantern together, except instead of making a square in the middle, we're going to glue them like this so um, they're a little closer together. So I'm just lining that up as a square edge there. The next one you'll see will come in on the side here. And then you can see, I think, where our four, it's kind of like a pinwheel on this one. It's a pinwheel on the top, and I'm gonna have to put glue on the side and the front of both the top and bottom to connect all four of these pieces. So I did end up having enough Jenga blocks to make one large lantern and two of the smaller ones. So first I'm going to take some sandpaper and just wherever there's some wood glue, um, sand that off, and I'm just kind of roughening this up. I do want this to look uh, more rustic for that farmhouse look. So just real quickly going with some sandpaper on all of the edges to not only get the wood glue remnants, but just to scuff it up a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do to give my lanterns a little more of a weathered wood look is now I'm dry brushing some of my Elephant Waverly chalk paint. It's kind of a dark gray. Um, it won't show up super dark on this brown, but it does give some dimension to the piece and I really, really love it. I'll also mention that whatever I'm doing here on the large lantern, I'm also doing on my two small lanterns. I just didn't think you needed to watch me do it three times. So elephant chalk paint first, and then I'm going to let that dry once I'm done dry brushing it on my piece. Of course, I will say this step is completely optional. It just depends on how you want it to go with your decor. Once the elephant chalk paint was dry, I'm also now going to take my white chalk paint and do basically the same thing, just adding to the texture of the wood here. Um, one thing I will say about the white is it will, if you go over where it says Jenga, it will kind of make the words stand out, but I didn't care. It didn't show up that much, but just beware of that if you are using actual Jenga blocks. Thank you. 
So for my actual candle holders, I decided to use what I had on hand. So I'm just going to use one large ball glass jar and two small ones. I think they're like jelly jars or something like that. But um, to dress them up just a little bit with that rustic farmhouse look, I'm taking nautical rope to go three times around the top of the large jar. And then I'm going to use jute twine to go around the top of the two smaller jars. Of course, if you don't have jars, um, Dollar Tree has a wide variety of glass containers, glass bases that you could use for this. I was just trying to use what I had on hand and I thought the nautical rope and the jute twine just was simple enough but added that little bit of um, texture to the top of each jar. I feel like these lanterns would look really great like out on a porch or a patio, maybe a patio table. And once they're finished, you're going to see, I think they kind of have a nautical look to them too, just because of the rope and the weathered wood. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about this and what would be some good alternatives to the nautical rope or the jute twine. I'd love to hear your opinions. And here's what the lanterns look like with the empty jars. Just kind of giving a short little video here so you can see all the different sides. And then I did add some of the rocks from Dollar Tree and a candle to the middle one. All right, guys, I hope you loved that DIY. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about it. And if there are some video ideas, some DIY ideas that you would like to see me tackle in the future, I will be doing another Craft My Stash challenge coming up in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you next time. Bye. And here are a few of my playlists. Be sure to click that subscribe button or one of my other playlists for what to watch next. Thanks.